everybody, and welcome to The First Step here on GDQ Hotfix. I'm your host, Keezeron, and unfortunately, today, I am not joined by my fellow co-host, Jay Hobbs. Hobbs is recovering from you know, a bad back because we're old and, you know, stuff happens. So uh, everyone, send, send some well wishes his way, whether it's spam chat or tag him on Twitter, which if you tag him on Twitter, that'd be really funny because he doesn't get notifications on his phone because he can't reach it right now. So that's extra cruel, but also very loving at the same time. Um, we were going to do Moon Scars, which is a brand new indie Metroidvania that came out like two days ago, like literally just came out this week. But unfortunately, we're pivoting because I really, really want to do that game with Hobbs in a race format. So instead, I'm just going to show everyone my usual bread and butter here, uh, just to show everyone at home that speedrunning isn't just a regular any percent run or a 100% run or any of that stuff. It can be anything and everything that you put your mind to as long as you go fast, which on that topic, that's exactly what the first step is about. We want to show all of you at home that if you want to play games fast, just do it. You don't need to know all the frame perfect tricks. You don't need to go for world record. You can go for really simple, basic, beginner friendly strats to get into it and handle it at your own pace and your own leisure. Um, before we start though, and before I explain what specifically I'm doing with Pokemon Crystal today, I just want to remind everyone that if you want to follow what GDQ is up to, you can always use the chat command links, exclamation point links in Twitch chat for all things GDQ. And you can always go to gamesunquick.com as a central hub of information for everything that's going on. Now, what I am doing today, uh, I am using a modified version of, of uh, Pokemon Crystal here. Let's make sure that we name ourselves J Hobbs in honor of Hobbs. But I'm going to keep him as a girl because ha ha Hobbs. Uh, this is just a bunch of quality of life options that I'm changing here. And this is just a check value if you're ever doing it either as a race or with friends. So we're going to start in 10 seconds or so, and then I'll explain what's going on. So uh, I lied. It's not 10 seconds. It's three two, one, start. So I'm doing a full item randomizer. So that means every single item within the game is shuffled around and that includes the key items. So my goal here is to figure out the fastest way to beat the Elite Four and Red with whatever seed I have, whatever everything's randomized to. Uh, there are some extra quality of life options added here. Obviously, we're going through text really fast. We have hold to mash. Um, you're going to see a bunch of really strong upgraded items as well for the sake of simplicity, for the sake of backspace, and also for the sake of trying to finish this before the show is over today. I have upgraded everything to its absolute maximum. If it's normally a potion, it's now a full restore. If it's normally a Pokeball, it'll be a Master Ball, so on and so forth. Um, right now, what we're doing is we're just trying to make sure that we have something that we can survive the beginning game with. And uh, that looks like it's going to be Dragonite out of all those options. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to save. Um, really silly quirk about Gen 2 is the gender of the Pokemon determines whether um, they have high attack or low attack. So we are looking for a male Dragonite here because this could be our main throughout the entire run. It sure is male and it sure does have a moveset. Not, not a good one, but it's there. Um, to kind of emphasize what's going on with the tracker, uh, there's a, a slew of items here. We need a combination of a whole lot of them to get to the end game. We're looking at uh, the entirety of the Poke Gear, so that includes the Poke Gear itself, the radio card, and the expansion card. We need all 16 badges um, and whatever combination of other items we need. So it could be, you know, Surf to access areas. Uh, well, we got the Mystery Egg already, so we're immediately turning back. So that's a good example. Now uh, we just picked up the clear bell. The clear bell allows us access to Tin Tower alongside the Rainbow Wing and a combination of either defeating Morty or clearing the Radio Tower. Now the neat thing about this is whatever this item becomes, we get five of. So hopefully it's something nice like rare candies or repels or healing items. So we have five full restores for that. That's pretty neat. So at this point in time, it's going to be a pretty, pretty vanilla approach to the video game where we have to obviously progress through the game to find stuff. So we're just going to make our way to Violet City. Uh, nothing too terribly exciting. I no longer have Repel, so we're going to run into encounters for a while. That's going to be one of the first things that I buy when we get to the shop is more Repels. Um, I don't want that right there because that would be bad. 
Now, self-destruct's interesting because we don't have fly or teleport or anything like that. So self-destruct is kind of what we like to affectionately refer to as budget teleport. As in, you will teleport and ruin your budget. Now, I am curious to anyone in chat, uh, anyone who, whether you are a veteran speedrunner or someone who wants to get into it or somewhere in between, um, the game that you want to play, is there any cool, quirky things you can do like this where you do a randomizer and things are out of order or any funny categories like Hollow Knight has a category called Happy Couple Percent where you unite a couple. Like, are there any cool things you want to do? Nothing terribly exciting so far. We are... We're just drowning in encounters, baby. Let's go. So for me right now, what I want to find relatively quickly is the bike, because obviously walking is slow. Um, also, we need to either find a combination of cut, which is HMO1, and hive badge, or squirt bottle, because otherwise we're trapped. And that would kind of be silly if I picked a soft lock seed for this. I'm just selling some stuff. We're gonna buy a bunch of repels. Um, perfect. I don't think we're gonna main swap anytime soon, so I'm not gonna buy Pokeballs. And I think we're just gonna stick with the Dragonite, even though the moveset isn't that great. So to speed up the process of movement, we're just gonna get our repels and go. Now, when I say every item can be something, I mean every item can be something. And this is something that, like, I've said something like four times in a span of like 20 seconds. Uh, doing something like a full item rando could be a little intimidating. I know longtime fans of the show might recall that Hobbs and I taught each other how to do our own randomizers. So I learned how to do Kingdom Hearts 2, and Hobbs learned how to do key item randomizer. Now, key item randomizer just shuffles it among other key items, whereas as you can see, literally every item is uh, awesome. We just found fly on a berry tree. If you ever need to fly, just look at a tree. Going through this little cutscene real quick. Okay, we got a badge. So we got a very valuable HM and we got a badge. Um, what's really interesting about this is there is a check available at the beginning of the game, which I'm actually going to... Hmm, do I go back for that? I think I go back for that because that might be super important. So I'm going to hope for an encounter here and I'm just going to self-destruct, go back. We did just spend all of our money, so it's, it's a cheap budget explosion teleport. You're gonna see you're gonna see stuff like this and um, save and quit strats all throughout this, just to save little pockets of time here and there. I am trying to finish this in roughly you know two hours and forty minutes. Some change. Also, I don't mind going back because of this. Blissey is an experience sack, and we sure would love experience right now. Ah, oh, beautiful. 652 experiences early is absurd. That's like three levels? Outstanding. Our Dragonite is sure getting huge. Alright, four levels. That's cool. Can I get a fifth? No. Uh... Not a good move. All right, so the Dragonite has the problem of the moveset is kind of stinky. So in a run like this where we're trying to get to the end game, how good your Pokemon is isn't just dependent on stats or what the Pokemon is, but also its moveset. This is not a very good moveset right now. Not at all. All right, going back paid off. So Squirt Bottle is going to be our access to the top half of Johto. Otherwise, like I said, we, we need Cut and Hive Badge, which we can still find, obviously, and Cut and Hive Badge are really important because it does give us a lot of checks, but we might be main swapping to a level 20 immediately, and this is where some of the issue of a full item randomizer, excuse me, a full item randomizer comes in. Um, we just went from having a finite number of checks and a simpler path to follow to now, I don't know, about 55% of the map is available. So now we're just going to be paralyzed with options. Oh, so the best way th to handle this is try to go to the areas that have the most amount of checks as possible, picking up things along the way. 
I'm just not entirely sure how I want to handle this. The sooner we find Storm Badge, the better, because then we can fly. I think I'm going to... Hmm, I'm, I'm looking at the map right now. Uh, what we don't have captured on stream is I have a tracker right now. Anyone who does any sort of randomizers, you might have heard of Emo Tracker. Uh, this is my way to keep up with what I have seen and what I haven't. So I'm, you're going to see me looking at this direction several times throughout this run as I stare at every single option available to me. As I think and think and think. While I am thinking, though, and just kind of going through the motions here, I think it's a good time to remind everyone that AGDQ 2023 will be online from January 8th to the 15th. And once again, just go to gamesandquick.com as your central hub for information. Uh, game submissions are already closed, uh, but you can tweet at GDQ and let us know what you're excited to see. I somehow got lost during that spiel. All right. So anyone else who has seen any sort of randomizers, you know, whether it's a link to the past, Ocarina of Time, there's always logic behind the randomizers. Uh, Pokemon is a lot more straightforward in the sense of there really aren't abilities that will be skippable for you to grab an item. The only real logic that we have in Crystal is Flash. So if we don't have Flash, we technically don't have to go into any dark rooms yet. But you're going to see me break the logic a couple of times, because a lot of times, like, like right there with Dark Cave, it's just really, really easy to grab the item. You know, other than the fact that I got lost. Let's pretend that didn't happen. So again, we're going to a shop. I don't remember what I have. I can sell. I can sell this. Um, let's buy some escape ropes. So escape ropes are good to get out of dungeons. And also there is an area that we can use an escape rope and get four item checks immediately. All right, we just keep getting master balls. Very good. All right, we're going to save because once again, the, the gender ratio determines how good something's attack is. So if this is a physical attacker, we obviously want male. If it's special attacker, it doesn't really matter. Okay, Crobat is interesting. So Crobat has a lot of speed, usable attack, and technically usable special attack. Uh, the Dragonite does have more attack stat, but if this Crobat has a good move set, then I think it's a serviceable swap. It uh, has Dig Thunder. Okay, it does not have a good move set. It is no longer a serviceable swap. I could give it Stab Fly, but we're not going to bother. So something I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to grab... Just kidding. I'm going to get an encounter first. Then I'm going to grab some items. Uh, we're going to go up to Ecruteek. So Ecruteek will be available to fly to if we can get fly. Um, might as well use the repel now. Just grab some easy items here. And then because we didn't get an exciting main for, uh, for anything, I think the best bet is to go through the regular progression of the game and get levels as we go. Uh, if that Crobat were something a lot better, or if it had like if it had like Drill Peck and Sludge Bomb, you know, two two of its a type, two of its type bonuses, then it, it would be uh, pretty serviceable. But as it stands, not the greatest. Okay, that TM might change things though. And we have Rainbow Wing already, so we can technically access Tin Tower, which is actually kind of scary. Um, we'll come back to that later. Also, I repelled, but I don't have the right Mon up front, so let's pretend like I haven't done that wrong. One other thing I can do is because we cleared the Sudo Wudo, I can walk over and get the uh, Baton Pass for us. I can get Rock Smash and look for a level 15. So, you know what? I like that idea. Let's actually go do that. Or just get more encounters. I like that too. Yeah, as stated, um, you know, I'm silly. I got to talk to the guy first. As stated, there's, um, there's a lot of items and it's pretty much just trying to determine what the best checks are to do at any given time. 
Uh, talking to that guy is important because we're not able to buy Rock Smash until we talk to him and grab his item. So Rock Smash produces two different level 15 encounters. Something else I'm going to do is I'm actually going to deposit the Crobat. That way, if I want to warp back to Violet City, we can just self-destruct and make our way back there again. We're going to utilize the bug catching contest here to walk to some items, grab them, and just quit out because that's faster than walking back. Be nice to know where the bike is, though. Like I said, bike is always good. Full restores are always a good pickup. I'm never going to be sad when we get a full restore. Now, one setting that I normally do on my own stream is I actually make the game even harder and set the trainer levels to 50% higher. So the final fight is all level 100. We are not going to do that today because I want to try and finish this within the allotted time. But there are definitely ways to make the challenge even more challenging. You can also just make it easier to the program that you use to produce these item randomizers. Um, there's, there's a whole slew of ways to make it beginner-friendly if you're just getting into it. Again, a TM that might determine whether we go with the Crobat or not. Like, one setting you can do is every single prize in the bug-catching contest can be a different item. So you could have a key item locked behind second place. But I am not doing that because that would not be fun. All right, just a lot of floor restores. Uh, what's the TM we got? Body Slam. You know what? That's enough for me to stay with the Dragonite. Dragonite has a nutty physical attack stat. What I'm going to do is there is an item to check here. I'm also going to teach Body Slam. Actually, just kidding. I'm not going to do that quite yet. And I'm not going to check this item. I just totally wasted my uh, repel. Because I just realized that we are level 9 and that fight is level 14, so we could probably win it, but why risk it? Alright. Now on that token, I'm going to go down here and do this fight, funny enough. There are four items we can grab down here. Uh, what is the Kenya? A Vulpix. Not the greatest. So I think the plan here is we we send out the Vulpix right now because I want to be able to death warp. So in order to death warp, I need everyone in the party fainted. Ooh. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Okay. So we're just gonna get hit by a bunch of zap cannons. That's funny. Oh my god. Bulbasaur is wearing his glasses. He hasn't missed once. Zap cannon is 50%. What is this? Okay, he finally missed. Miss one more time. Or die. That works. Thunderbolt. So yeah, I probably shouldn't be doing this fight right now, to be honest. But, like I said, there's four items to check here. We're gonna check everything that we can, also get Rock Smash. Rock Smash might actually be pointless now, because we do have Body Slam, which will make this Dragonite a lot better. Like I said, Dragonite has a very, very good attack stat. Dragonite's only real problem is once it sees any, any snowflake at all, it will implode. Right now, Sludge is actually our best move. Oh, that's scary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright, Supersonic Miss is always nice. It's funny that we confuse Sandshrew instead of Sandshrew confusing us. Hitting itself in confusion is beautiful. Well, it's only level 7, so that's fine. I am curious if, 
if the Rock Smash poke is worth getting at this point in time, or if we should commit to the Dragon Egg. It, this is where a lot of the routing decisions come in, because you got to remember that this is going to be all the way to red, so you want to always make sure that you have something that's, that's going to last you. I do think the Dragonite is probably going to last a pretty long time. All right. All right, so we got Surf. So really, really, uh, really good trip down here, for sure. Still no bike, but that's okay. Surf is a very, very good move, and it's obviously going to be needed for progression at some point in time. I'm going to go ahead and continue to check a lot of different stuff. There's another badge. All we had to do was talk to Boina. Friendly reminder to everyone that is that might have tuned in a little late, or you know, you missed the explanation before. Hobbs is not feeling too great today. Uh, we were going to do one of our improv races, uh, semi-improv actually, because we both played the game. But uh, Hobbs is not feeling great, so we're pivoting to this. I'm just showing everyone what I do on my free time and what I usually do on my stream. I really love doing randomizers. Randomizers is such a great thing. And you know, there is actually a hot fix show about randomizers ran by my good pal Skybills. Random number generation. Randomizers are always such a fun way to go through a game. Even, even if you are an expert of a game, just getting into a randomizer and changing things up is always neat. The bike would also be neat. Off, off. Alright, so what we're gonna do here is we're buying a water stone. That might seem like a well, I gotta sell something first. That might be like a, a strange thing to see. But water stone actually opens up one of the ruins of Alf rooms. And that is four checks, and four checks is always a good number. Um that's thief. That could be anything. Um that could also be anything. I'm not sure what those are. I might save and check them. In fact, yeah, let's do that. Money is a little tight right now. I want to be able to afford things later. Um, let's buy this. TM48 is Shadow Ball. That's actually really, really good. So we are definitely going to keep that. And let's see what the paralysis thing is. I'm going to guess it's probably like Thunderbolt. Thundershock. Okay. This, uh, this Dragonite's coming together. I like it. Like I said, I'm gonna be looking this direction a lot because I want to make sure that I clear out all my... all my map. So yeah, having, having Body Slam and Shadow Ball pretty much proves to me that we should do normal progression once I finish some of these item checks. Just get a lot of light items and experience on this Dragonite. So let's teach. Do that. I had to think about it for a sec. Do that. I still want to keep self-destruct because we're still going to use that. I'm pretty sure we're going to get encounters because we are underleveled, but that's okay. I'm going to grab everything I can on this side, and then we're just going to blow up. would really be nice, though, huh? Sharp Beak? That'd be good if we got Drill Pack for Dragonite. So the type boosting items in Generation 2 are only 10% and not the 20% that we are traditionally used to. But still, 10%'s pretty good, because Drill Pack from a Dragonite would be 120 power. 
So it'd be 132 power after that item. No key items in here so far. Got got a decent amount of money and stats. Full restores are always nice. I will never complain about getting full restores. Poke gear. All right, that's one of the three absolutely 100% required items we need. Got our full restore. So I'm going to wait for my repel to wear out, and then we're going to go kaboom. Butterfree in the forest. That's funny. Alright, here we are, back home. <laughs> We're gonna deliver the Kenya real quick. I'm gonna continue to keep explosion strats available. Alright, so that check was nothing. So, going back to what I was alluding to earlier, like I said, Pokemon Crystal really doesn't have much in terms of, uh... Oh, you know what? I'm silly. Hold on. Never mind, I need to get my Crobat. So, Pokemon doesn't really have much in terms of logic. The only real logic is, do you have Flash? If so, then go in this room. If not, then the logic of the seed doesn't determine that you should go in here yet. But uh, I usually just break that anyway. It usually pays off. Sometimes it doesn't. So we're going to withdraw the Crobat. The Crobat's going to be one of our HM friends. And teach it Fly, teach it Rock Smash. Probably teach it Cut when we get Cut, if we get Cut. Our biggest hunt right now, again, is still trying to find the bike. The bike would save us a lot of time in terms of movement. Um, also, getting... Um... All right, you have Dig. Neat. Getting... Uh... Words are hard right now. Oh, getting a Storm Badge is what I'm thinking of. If we get Storm Badge, then that means that we can fly anywhere, and our movement is much better. Don't mind the dark screen. I know it's spooky. Everyone in chat, hold hands. We'll get through this together. Okay, this more than solidifies my decision that Dragonite was the right play. This Croconaw is fine, but not great. Whereas Dragonite is great. Just doesn't want to get cold. Much like me. No clue what TM50 is, but we got it. I'm so used to doing this movement with a bike that doing it without a bike feels really, really slow. And I'm not entirely sure where I am in, in relation to like everything in the cave. Full restore. Calcium. Something I'm going to do here is we're going to save because the moment that we walk out of this cave, we lost the original entrance, so I can't just escape rope back. So if none of these are items that I need, then I can just reset and then escape rope and then we're back over to Violet City. So far, this entire area has essentially been useless, though. All right, we don't need any of that. We do the save and quit. I mean, we do have dig, so I could do that instead. Dig. And we're back over on this side, which means Violet City is right around the corner. Right now, we still don't have access to Kanto. We still don't have strength, so we can't access the last corner of Johto. We're going to go ahead and climb Sprout Tower, though. Sprout Tower has a handful of checks, but it's also a really good, like, experience net for us. I think there's, what, five checks? 
there's four items and then the Elder Lee fight. I can't believe we had access to higher level Pokemon and Dragonite still was just the best option. I can also totally believe that. Body Slam Shadow Ball is a great combination of moves. Hopefully we get Storm Badge soon, that way I can stop worrying about keeping self-destruct. The only thing that makes this moveset better is getting like Earthquake and Drill Duck. More useless items. Even more useless items. Alright, now I'm extra glad that we have Shadow Ball. We can't really deal with rock types right now otherwise. Body Slam is just so good. Whenever you run a physical Pokemon, at least in Gen 2, the moveset that you're always looking for is some combination of Drill Pack, Earthquake, uh, Swords Dance. Um, there's always Double Kick, which Double Kick is sadly the most consistent good fighting move. Um, expansion card. That is the second of three pieces we need to get to the last half of Johto. Or excuse me, the last half of Kanto. Shadow Ball is also good. Body Slam is great if you can find it, otherwise Strength is an acceptable substitute. Strength is 80 power, Body Slam is 85. Sometimes that extra 5 makes a whole world of difference. Oh, oh, well, goodbye Bellsprout. I'm so used to 50% level boost that this is... I'm, I'm shocked, like, oh, it's only level 10. So we're we're at a point right now where... Let me just double check my stuff here. Oops. Not mean to give that to you. So we're at a point here where we have so many full restores because, like I said, I buffed every single healing item to a full restore that... A lot of times you're just going to see me heal and also use max elixirs whenever I have a ton available instead of going to the center just because it's faster. I can do it in a menu that I'm already in. Oh. Did not expect you to live, to be honest. All right. So Dragonite's... Learn set is terrible, but the TMs have been fantastic. We are being saved by items. I think here... I know I've said I like, I like to have a bike about 20 times now, but that's probably the most important item to me, because that really speeds up the process. Followed by Storm Badge. If we could, if we could get one or the other soon, that would be great. We're roughly about 30 minutes in. Um... Our progress for 30 minutes in isn't too bad. We have a couple of badges, we have a couple of HMs, uh, we have progression items. We're, we're a lot better off than it might look. But again, the, be the beginning game is kind of slow for progress. You're going to see a lot more checks done in a much more rapid pace, probably about an hour to an hour and a half in. So probably after the first break. So chat, what did you have for lunch today? All right, leftovers is pretty much the best item in the game. So TM31, if we find it, is Earthquake. That's exciting news to hear. The moment we see TM31, I'm going to pop off. 
I had a bagel for lunch. I had a busy day today. Alright, so like I said, for the sake of trying to get some levels, we're going to go through normal progression here. I am going to try and keep my center here. Not that I think the Crobat is going to be able to die necessarily, but I do want to keep my center here in case I want to Death Warp back. Alright, so this, where I'm going is normally something you do immediately in the beginning, but because I was super excited to see if the Sita Wudo was any good, we kind of skipped it, but we're going to go to... Uh, aw. We're going to go to the Ruins of Alf. There's one room where if you use an escape room in it, you open the back door and you get four items. Much like how if you have a water stone, which I'm sure there's probably at least one person that saw me give the water stone to Crobat. As long as the water stone is on your person, then the water stone room opens up. So it just saves an inventory space doing that. Also make sure that I don't accidentally sell it. Okay. Thunder badge in here. Excellent. And some vitamins. So obviously a needed place to go. We would have had that badge earlier, but no big deal. No harm, no foul. Now we're gonna make our way through Route 32. We do have the Zephyr badge, so we qualify for this check. And it was one that we didn't need. What I'm going to do here is, while we're in the menu, I'm gonna not be sad at my menuing. Uh, give the leftovers. I'm gonna use the PP up on Body Slam because Body Slam's our best move. Using PP up on items is uh, on items on moves is always good to try and prevent healing as much as possible, especially in my situation where I'm trying to avoid entering Pokemon centers. So we did just get a TM, and I'll check on that the next time we menu. Just optimize the amount of times we have to menu. I am going to save before we enter the Pokemon Center here, because like I said, I'm trying to keep my warp point. And the moment we enter this center, this center becomes our warp point. Okay, uh, there's our Kanto access, so now my... <laughs> now my tracker is very lit up. Okay, not an item we need, so I can escape. What I need to do, or at least need to try and do, is once we clear out... Once we clear out Slowpoke well, I need to try and faint the Crobat and faint the Flaffy. That way we can just self-destruct and leave eventually. Unless we get cut. If we get cut, I don't have to worry about Death Warping. If we do not get cut, though, then the fastest way back to Violet and then to the other parts of Johto and eventually Kanto would be the Death Warp. Man, why couldn't Hobbs get a seed this good whenever he did this game? <laughs> oh, I forgot to check the TM. We'll check that soon. It's TM05 and TM11, I believe. All right, so nothing in Union Cave, but that's okay. Cleanse Tag is useless. X Special is not something we're going to need. Always happy with floor stores. Now 
Now what I am gonna do, on the off chance that we do find Fly, I'm gonna grab this item now. That way I don't have to worry about fighting Rival. Now granted, Rival isn't gonna be too difficult for us, but... Oh, that's huge. All right, bike. We in there. Bike is easily the best item for us right now because that... Ooh, rock slide. Hmm. Uh, rock slide something I will consider teaching once I can confirm that we can fly. Otherwise, I still need self-destruct. I will save, though. Now, I do have Dig, but as you saw, I still use an escape rope. If I if I have escape ropes, but I also have Dig, it just depends, like, where in the menu I am. That's a bulky boy. I don't know why I'm worried about Rival. We're level 16. We're level 17. I don't know why Rival scares me. We can fight Rival just fine. But we did get bike, so, you know, my, my thought process was there, chat. My thought process was there. It made sense. Now, while we're going through the, uh, the Slowpoke Well slog, I also want to remind everyone that uh, Fright Fatales is going to be on October 23rd. It's a one-day event to celebrate the spooky season. You're going to have dark, scary, and horror-themed speedruns from the Frame Fatales community. Use exclamation point Fright in chat to learn more about the event. I'm pretty excited. Horror games are like underrated speedruns. A lot of times horror games are no longer horror games. The only, the only scary thing about a horror game half the time... Ooh. I'm not going to finish my thought. That's huge. We can fly now. We can fly. That's very, very good. That's really early, too. I'm actually surprised. As I was saying... Horror games, when you speedrun them, are only horror games because how horrible it is to, to get gold splits. <laughs> Otherwise, they're, they're usually uh, surprisingly pretty chill speedruns. All right, Blizzard from that cloister probably would have demolished us. So that was incredibly lucky. Now, there are some checks that become available after I clear this. I also didn't necessarily need to clear it at this point in time, but since we're in here anyway. Um, so we can do... We can do Bugsy, and we can do the, uh, the Cut Guy check and Charcoal. We don't have to, but we can. Uh, we do have Fly now, though, so I do have the ability to just leave, and if I am not satisfied with my finds, then I can just come back later. So that is probably our best bet, is to just leave for now. So get this item check out of the way. Arbos always good, speed always good. I'm gonna go ahead and slap that bad boy on. Uh, throw items I don't need. That also, actually, I could sell that, but I don't think we need it do all of that. Um, we can now... Let me stare at my map for a little bit. Let's go to Goldenrod because we dropped off Kenya and we can go ahead and grab the final item in the Kenya side quest. Okay, well now I kind of wish I didn't teach stuff to Dragonite. So a Super Rod means we have access to a level 40. So I'm going to save, and maybe we find a really good level 40. This is the second time today this has happened to me, and it's never happened to me before, so this is really weird. Okay, uh, <laughs> no. No, and no. Let's, uh, there, there are four different slots we can find. Uh, Super Rod in this modification gives you a 40%, 30%, 20%, and 10%. So let's see what else we have. We could get a Blastoise with Stab Serve. That's not terrible. I'm going to go ahead and throw one of our Master Balls at it. If it has a good move set, then I probably switch to it just because it is higher level. Even though the Dragonite's move set is pretty dang good, levels are super important. We will always have Surf with this. Confusion. Okay, it has a sleep move. Grant, it's not the best sleep move, but sleep move is great because if we ever have to set up, it's an easy setup. 
So uh, I love you, Dragonite. You're really cool, but we're going to go with the Blastoise. Um, let me just teach some moves here. I could teach it Spark. Over Bite, probably. No, over Confusion. I'm going to keep Sing. Like I said, the, the Sleep comes really, really in handy. We don't have a rare candy, otherwise I would rare candy it right away. We're gonna go grab this item, and then we're gonna go to the other half of Johto, check out some items, and then probably make our way to Kanto through the boat. I never thought I would take a Blastoise over a Dragonite, but the, the, the level difference is massive, and it'll it'll be very, very good. Unless this is a drill pack, in which case I change my mind again. It is not. Okay. If that were a drill pack, I swear. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the other half of Johto. Which, silly me, we can do this. Um. So what I'm going to do here is we'll go to the right first because I can fly. We'll unlock Lake of Rage. And then we will go to... Hey, the rare candy. Uh, I'm not going to bother, though. Uh, and then we'll go to the left to Olivine. Because then Olivine will take us to... Uh, to Kanto. Get some more item checks out of the way. We can't use Strength. We can't use Surf. At least outside. But we are currently now looking for the Fog Badge. We're looking for the plane badge. Um, the last piece of the... Ooh. That's Whirlpool. We don't have the badge to use that, but we have Whirlpool. Which means we could probably do Whirl Islands eventually. So once you enter a town in this game, it is unlocked for the rest of eternity. So me entering these towns and entering Lake of Rage and stuff, we can always fly back to them later when we have more stuff available to us to check. Like, I can't cut right now. So that means I can't grab all the items over on this left side. I can grab one of them, but not all of them. But we will have the fly point unlocked so we can come back later. There's one more item to check here. Another rare candy, not bad, not bad. I think once I become a Blastoise, I'll probably come back to Ecruteek and clear all of that so we can do the... Uh, we can do Burn Tower, we can do Morty, which will unlock... Uh, will be the last key to unlock Tin Tower, and then we'll climb Tin Tower, because Tin Tower has... I don't know, like, 12... Plus checks. Off the top of my head, I can't recall. So this fight locks away one item. I also have the option of going back to... Uh, going back to Azalea or... Um, or Goldenrod, because we're completely overleveled and every fight would be a piece of cake. All right, um, that's neat. So because of that, we almost have access to the entirety of Kanto. We don't have cut though, so it's kind of useless. We could get a level 50 instead of a level 40, which that would be really exciting. Maybe there's a good level 50 or maybe it's not good. You know, who knows? The Blastoise is probably going to be our final Mon. That would be my guess. Tiny little optimization here. We can skip the cutscene by flying into Olivine. Not something you can normally do, obviously. Now, for the heck of it and for the content, I'm going to check the trade, because imagine if it's a War Turtle from Mewtwo. Lava for Gyarados, not close. 
gonna buy some super repels here. We can buy max repels in Kanto, but uh, super repels are your best bang for your buck. Um, so I'll actually sell these max repels. Um, I'm gonna sell three of these max elixirs. Get rid of pain split, get rid of razor leaf, get rid of encore, keep rock slide in case. And then we will buy. A oh, hack. Uh. Let's, let's get rid of the escape ropes because we have dig. That way I can buy 41. Okay, just kidding. 40. <coughs> 40 super repels. I can climb lighthouse as well. That is a lot of checks, but it is a lot of fights. So that is an option, but I'm going to try and avoid that until we get secret potion. That way we can combine a lot of checks into one. Alright, that pink bow would have been really good for the Dragonite and its body slam. Alright, so we're just gonna go ahead and make our way to Kanto now because we have way more checks there than in Johto. Most of the Johto checks now are locked behind fights, whereas Kanto, I have a ton of checks I can do that don't require any fights at all. Oh, also, I'm sure everyone's noticed this at this point in time, but with this modification, you can bike indoors. It is fantastic. The bike is the single most important item you can find in a full item randomizer if you want to go fast. That right, should be easy pickings for War Turtle here. Pretty much just going to be surf everything for the next foreseeable future. I probably bite the jinx. It's faster than me. It's like I'm a turtle. So this fight we can actually lose. Uh, there are three fights in Crystal that you can lose without uh, any real consequence other than you don't get experience or money. Uh, you can lose the first rival fight. You can lose a fight against Yusin. And then um, you can lose that fight. And it's programmed that way because if you get on the boat and you lose that fight and wipe, you know, the only required fight, then the boat's just gone. Alright, not, not an exciting item there, but we're gonna, we're gonna feed vitamins to our war turtle so it does get better. That's you. EP up surf. Throw that away because we don't need it. That. Fly from Vermilion to Vermilion. One of my favorite speedrun strats of all time. Money. Not that we need it right now, but it's there. We're getting the bike shop call when we just pull up. That's cool. Oh my... <laughs> How did that happen? Alrighty then. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of available checks here that don't require fights. And there's Flash, so I was about... I was literally... Every time I'm about to say something on, on this episode today, folks, something else just interrupts me in, in a good way. I was about to say, there is one fight that we can do so we can go to Rock Tunnel and check those items, but it would be out of logic. But now that we have Flash and Zephyr Badge, it is now in logic. Uh, what is TM10? Ice Punch! Um... Yep. <clears throat> Bite's nice and everything. Ice Punch is better. I want to keep Sing. This Blastoise is going to be very, very good. I actually shouldn't have taught that yet, though, because I could check the level 50 at any time now. Got a little too excited. Alright. We do have items we can check here. I'm repelling. Because even though 
can teach this too. I'm repelling because even though uh, it's only two tiles, the amount of times I've gotten encounters here is absurd. What would I even want at this point in time? Like Thunderbolt and Ice Beam instead? That's Headbutt, and then the other TM we got was Rock Throw, so not very good. Alright, blue card is a key item, and it is technically useless, but you can find a use for it. So blue card is how you keep track of your points if you do Boina's Password, which is a radio um, program that happens from like 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night, something like that. But uh, you, can, you can take advantage of that and essentially get infinite rare candies, but that's not what we are going to do. I don't believe we have the lock item. Okay, good. Okay, card key. So card key gives us access to the second half of the radio tower. Um, we don't have access to the radio tower quite yet, but if and when we do, that'll make things a lot faster. I also just want to remind everyone real quick that we're five minutes away from a break. Uh, we do take breaks every hour uh, for a handful of reasons. Uh, we want to show everyone when you're first learning how to speedrun, you don't have to do everything in one sitting. But uh, also, this is a good way to promote some general wellness, like you know, getting up, stretching your legs. Um, oh, we can surf now. Um, you know, staying hydrated, getting water, so on and so forth. But uh, this also allows us to play some ads, and ads are actually a good way to help support the hotfix content that you love to watch. And on that topic, because of ads, because of your subs, Prime Gaming subs, Gifted subs, and Bits Cheered, um, it helps support Games Done Quick both with Hotfix and AGDQ 2023 costs. So if you don't want to sit through ads and you instead want to hear a bunch of music, uh, consider subscribing. So we saved right there because it's actually really slow to climb up that and then climb back down. So that just allows us to do that check really quickly. Rage Candy Bar. So that trash can actually uh, ignores the uh, make every item better thing. So <laughs> that's kind of funny. Uh, we're going to go to the Celadon Mart real quick. I'm going to sell some items, also see what uh, TMs are available. Get rid of Headbutt, we can get rid of Leech Slide, get rid of Rock Throw. Um, go Ice Punch. Did we see TM11? Or it wasn't that Body Slam, I think. So 11, 18, and 37 I want to check out. So we're going to save once again just so I can keep track of money. Um, 11, 18, 37. So Spark... Lovely Kiss and Bone Club. Okay, so I'm going to get Lovely Kiss because that's better than Sing. In fact, we will not only buy Lovely Kiss, but I don't actually think we're going to teach it right away. Um, that way we can have four move slots available to us until we absolutely need to do setup strats. So we'll have Lovely Kiss in the background available to us. Sleep is very, very powerful for a run like this, where your your main is going to be underleveled, like, no matter what you do. Unless you spend a lot of time grinding. Like, if you're trying to go through this fast, you're never going to match Red's level, ever. Even if you get a level 60 early, you're never going to match. The sleep is a good way to n use that time to set up your X items and get stronger. Um, ice Beam! Okay. Okay, bye, Ice Punch. All right, this War Turtle's sick. <laughs> War Turtle's great. And it's gonna level up from this Moltres, I'm pretty sure, so we're gonna have a Blastoise. And his War Turtle just keeps getting better and better. 
Let's go. All right. Okay, so we have Fuchsia City unlocked. Something I'm going to do real quick is go back to Lavender Town. Uh, there is an item that we can get now that we can surf. So we're going to go grab that. Still no cut, though, but... All right. Let's go here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make my way over to Rock Tunnel here. I'm also going to heal. I think we'll be fine, but we're still hurt. So let me just, you know, actually pick the right Pokemon to heal. This Blastoise is good. I had my doubts. I threw away a really good Dragonite, but this is, this is a good Blastoise. Surf, Ice Beam, Spark, and a Sleep move. Very solid. Oh, I meant to repel first. Oh no. My optimal menu is ruined. So we're using up the repels, that way I can get them out of my inventory, but also, you know, utilize having them. Uh, TM47, I believe, is what we just picked up, so I will check that in a sec. Once we have the menu again. All right, so it looks like we're good to go with our break. I'm going to clear out the rest of this dungeon, and then we are going to go ahead and take a quick five-minute break. So break in probably another, like, minute. We're close. Not even a minute. We only have two items left. Or we'll restore. And the last item... There's a TM. Let's check the TMs and then call it good, gang. We got Smog and Wing Attack. Wing Attack would have been nice for the Dragonite. I'm going to go ahead and save, and we're going to start our break in three, two, one, pause. Stick around, folks. We'll be back in a few minutes. Use this as your chance to go use the bathroom, get some water, stretch, so on and so forth, and we'll see you on the other side. Welcome back, everybody, from the break. Again, we appreciate you sticking through it. Um, just want to remind anyone who is watching us in the future on YouTube, uh, if you ever want to watch live content here on GDQ Hotfix, you can go to twitch.tv slash games done quick. Um, we start Hotfix content every weeknight, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and every weekend at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. There's always a slew of shows. There's usually two a day. It's a lot of fun. You get to see a lot of cool speedrunning content from your favorite content creators. Now, with that, we're going to go ahead and pick it up again in three, two, one, go. So I've just been relaxing in the cave, you know, no big deal. So we're going to... I'm going to save here. We're going to jump down this ledge and see what this item is. All right, we don't need it, so save away. So we don't have the machine part, but by going here and talking to the power plant manager, we do unlock one additional check. And since we're here in the neighborhood anyway, I might as well. We're going to go ahead, get this conversation out of the way. He's going to blast someone with a zap cannon. Now, once we return the machine part, it unlocks, I think, five or six different checks. I think it's five. Hope it's five. I think it's five. I have no clue anymore. All right, so now we have two checks available in Cerulean City. Technically, one of them is in Cerulean City. It's just kind of out of the way. And then we have this one. All right, amulet coin. That's good for money if I need money. I don't think money is much of a problem right now. Um, I guess if we get to a point where we have to die a lot, then, you know, money good, but... So, the item that's technically in Cerulean is over here. If anyone remembers Gen 1 or Gen 3 or, or you know, the Gen 2 remakes, there's a Unknown Dungeon. This is all that's in front of Unknown Dungeon. 
Okay, now that we have all of that, I'm going to check out the level 50 real quick. Again, we're going to save because, like mentioned before, if it's a physical attacker, um, we want a male physical attacker because of gender ratio and how the attacking stat is determined. That sounded like a cliffable. That is a cliffable. Uh... We'll catch it in case we need a backup. But the Blastoise is leagues better than this, so uh, I'm not going to worry about this. Uh, what's its moveset? It came with an item. It came with a TM. It came with a flamethrower TM. It came with a flamethrower TM. All right, so you know how I said uh, I'll get rid of the sleeping move if we have a fourth move, and uh, <laughs> I'll teach sleep later. Well, there's our moveset until we get Thunderbolt, if we find that. That is absurd. That is absurd. I'm a cheater. I look like a cheater. I knew it was about to wear out. So we can't really advance this too far because um, we're cut locked. But there is that item and two other, oh my gosh, two other items I can grab and they might be needed. They also just might, funny enough, be cut or hive badge, so we might as well. Okay. So, <laughs> um, there are two checks available with the boat now because we can surf. Uh, they're kind of silly checks, but we're going to do them anyway. Again, we have no idea if something's behind it or not. I would like to inform the people of chat that Hobbs has messaged me in Discord in all caps, how does it just keep getting better? I don't know, man. Blastoise isn't something I normally run because I usually find something that's a little better. Like, Blastoise is fine. Don't get me wrong. But Blastoise isn't, like, the most offensive unit. This poor Dragonite. It deserved better than this. All right, there's the floor store. So I do have to leave and re-enter to get back on the boat. This, this, this turtle! I love turtles. Turtles are one of my favorite animals. Like, there's, there's your fun keyser on fact of the day. I love turtles. I want to get my own turtle soon. We did just adopt a cat, and we have another cat coming in less than a month. So, I don't want to overwhelm the household with animals, but I want a turtle. Alright, as usual, the checks really aren't that good. So what we can do now is there are a ton of surf related checks that I can do. So that's that's the best way to knock this out. Now there are checks that are better than others. But All right, what I am going to do here though is we have one repel left. So I'm actually going to go to Olivine and use that last repel to unlock Cyanwood. And I will just be on super repels for the rest of the run. Also, don't mind the rival that's just floating. That's that's normal. Everything is normal here. As my good friend Andy would say, the game is just confused. There are two checks we can do here. This is also a nice little hub for once we have Whirlpool available. And uh, we can... Access World Island. Also, when we get strength, we can always go here and do the badge and everything. Also, if we actually climb, uh, climb Lighthouse, finally, there, there's a lot, a lot that can happen. Where Cyanwood actually becomes useful. Where am I going? I want to go up here. There's two items locked behind Surf and Violet, so we're going to go get those. Something else we can do is, because we have Surf, I can actually unlock the uh, the rocket base. 
And also we can see what the shiny is. But that is that is a lot of checks we can do. But there's a lot of fights involved in that. I'm trying really hard to avoid some fights for the time being. We're going to make our way over to Union Cave, because there's two checks we can do. We don't have Plane Badge, unfortunately. Otherwise, I could take care of um, the Waterstone Room. But we need Strength for that. We could also, if we have Plane Badge, do Slowpoke well again. Because there are two items locked behind Surf and Strength. Well, there's Strength. Now we just need the Badge. All right, so that's gonna go to Surf immediately. More Surf, good. Uh, don't need the Rock, don't need the Bow, don't need the Attack. Actually, we don't need the Money, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh-huh. See, what else can we do? We can go to the Flash Room, which that's four items. Again, not not like we'd struggle with a fight right now, but obviously doing checks without having fights required is going to be faster than doing fight locked checks. And then also once we start doing those fight locked checks, I want to make sure that we get maximum value from it and have as fast of a fight as possible. So like we could do Janine, for example. Janine is two checks, but Janine's mons are all mid to high 30s. So they're not going to fall in one hit without a bunch of setup. Whereas if we did Bugsy right now, Bugsy would die in 20 seconds or less. Alright, so nothing here. Let's go check out more Surf checks. We got technically three over here, but the third one requires a sequence of three fights, so we're just going to grab the two item balls. All right, it's Max Elixir Island. Let's go. <laughs> Poor Bugsy and Whitney just being completely ignored. All right, Calcium. That's really good for us. So we'll give that right away. Um, Let's see. We're going to grab the items over here that require Surf. Oh my god! <laughs> Alright, we're going to fight this optional trainer because I don't know what 2 is. I'm supposed to go 2 tiles over. We did not do that. Oops. It's fine. Blastoise hasn't been out in a while. I just wanted to remind everyone we have a Blastoise. <laughs> and Blastoise is a murderer. <clears throat> Alright, there's two items we can grab on this route, and then five items we can grab inside Mount Mortar. Once we're able to cut, we can get these three items below us, but since we can't cut yet... Mount Mortar is somewhere that in a full item randomizer like this, you tend to go into at minimum two times, but usually three to four times. If you go in there four times, it means you forgot an item and you're, you're a dingus and you're turning around. But because it has items locked behind Waterfall, it has items locked behind Surf, it has items locked behind Strength, which you can bypass Strength by doing, uh, doing the Waterfall Room. Uh, it's just, there's a lot of items that are here. I think at this point in time, once we clear this area, my best bet in terms of amount of checks for the work 
is we go do Burn Tower, go to Morty, and then climb Tin Tower, because I think we are decent enough level to where we can survive all of that just fine. I'm going to use an escape rope to get out of here, that way this is just out of my inventory. And there's a hidden item over here. Alright. I lied, we're doing one more thing before we go to Ecritique again. And that is... to get the shiny, which... The shiny is actually a check, as it does drop an item. This also unlocks the rocket hideout in Mahogany, which is, I believe, 12 checks. Technically 15, if you count the, the checks after, um... After you clear hideout. Tin Tower is still more checks, overall, for what we're doing. But I think Tin Tower is the correct play for now, so that's what we're gonna do. No matter where we're going right now, though, we are going to absolutely overwhelm what we're fighting. Because we are significantly higher level. We have a repel up still, right? Yep. So we can get all but one item in here. There is an item that's strength locked, and we still don't have the plane badge. We still don't have any piece of cut. Oh. <laughs> we have a piece of cut, everyone. Because <laughs> every time I talk today, I just will it into existence. <laughs> Alright, we still need the cut HM. And we still need the plane badge. Goodness gracious. This fight's easy peasy. This Blastoise is designed to win at everything forever. Poor Dragonite. That Dragonite was so good. That Dragonite was actually really good. It just got thrown away like it was nothing. It's trying to learn Ice Punch again! Why is this Blastoise so good? Okay, here's our one problem. This isn't gonna die because it's a Blissey. It's nowhere close to die! Die! Ay ay ay! There is an item right behind Rival, which is kind of annoying because you have to re-enter. Eradicate. So it was Eradicate, Sunflora, and... I think that's Jolteon. So that would have been a good 40. A little late, but... We're gonna go back in, we're gonna grab that item. All right, we can gamble. Excellent. Don't ban me, Twitch. So we we have Morty for two checks, and Tin Tower is currently right now five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen checks. So that's why we chose to go here instead, because counting. So the 14 checks with Tin Tower, the two checks from Morty, and the three available checks in Burn Tower outweigh the uh, 15 total checks in Mahogany right now. Also, it takes more fights to clear out Mahogany than it would at Critique. There's also Kimono Girls. But that's kind of a... Kimono Girls is a notoriously lame check because it's five fights. Now, granted, it's five fights with one Pokemon each, but it's five fights for one total check. It very rarely pays off. Very rarely. Very, very, very rarely. When it does, though, you feel silly. God, this Blastoise is so good.
What a great Blastoise. Blastoise used to be the speedrun mon in Pokemon Red and Blue. Then the Nidoking route was found. It is still currently the speedrun mon in Fire Red Leaf Green. Pretty sure Spark kills this. We did it. We saved a super effective instant text box. Right, well, while we're finishing up this gym, just want to remind everyone again that AGQ 2023 is going to be online from January 8th to the 15th. Um, game submissions are currently closed. So uh, if you want to tweet at Games Unquick to let them know what you'd like to see, and if you want more information on all deadlines, all events, and everything Games Unquick, just go to gamesunquick.com. This fight's easy! This Blastoise is so good! The literal only way this Blastoise gets better is if Spark becomes Thunderbolt. Which at that point in time, I, I will accuse myself of cheating. What we really need to do is find the Glacier Badge. Hey, there's the Plane Badge. Okay, so with the Plane Badge, we now have seven total badges, which means that we can go to Mahogany, oh, not Mahogany, Blackthorn. Um, and it's just also extra convenient because it allows us to use Strength. So what we're going to do here is each Strength. We're going to grab the one item in uh in burn tower that we weren't able to get before you seen is still just there for some reason help help i can't movement i have to try and take advantage of my repel right now um, even though we are going to Tin Tower, we're going to fly over to Azalea, go to Slowpoke Well and grab those items, and then go do the Waterstone Room finally. I want to take advantage of the fact that we have a Repel up. And utilize that efficiently. I don't know if this Repel is going to last long enough, but we'll see. It's incredible to think how many things are locked behind Cut, Strength, and Surf. Alright. Oh, not even close. That's okay. So as soon as we enter this, the game's just gonna freeze up for a second because we have the water stone in our inventory, so the back just opens up immediately. That's... Revives are good. Aura stores are good. EM39 better be Thunderbolt. I'm spoiled. M39 is Mega Drain. Uh, ooh. Oh, cut. It's wild. Um, while we have the repel up still, again, I want to take advantage of it being up. So we're going to go to Route 44. There is uh, an island to surf on. And there's cut. You know, there, there we go. I just keep willing it into existence. Sure. All right, well, that unlocks a lot of checks. I'm just a cheater. Uh, 
Okay, I lied. I'm gonna go through Ice Path first, and then we'll go to Tin Tower eventually. Tin Tower is very much on the docket. You know, on account of the 5 million checks that are there. A friendly reminder to anyone who's just now tuning in and no clue what's going on. So this is a full item randomizer. So every item is shuffled. Um, some of them upgraded just for the ease of convenience. Um, but the goal is to get all 16 badges and defeat Red. And the Elite Four. So badges, Elite Four, Red. And you accomplish that in whatever way you can with how the items are shuffled. See if I do the cool movement. Nope. Messed up. I'm no longer cool. So we save here because it's faster to save, check these two items I'm about to check, and reset than it is to climb your way out. Now, we could also just get an item and that ruins that. Okay. Ice Path usually has an item or two in it. Just because it does have a lot of checks in it. It's also a really, like, relatively quick dungeon to go through. So far, it's coming up empty, though. Mystic Water might be good over Leftovers for now, because we don't really need Leftovers. That's more of a later game thing. It would boost the power of our Surf to like 150 total or something like that, something really good. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that for now. Alright, machine part. So that unlocks some checks in, uh, in Kanto. Wait, hear me out. What if it's Blastoise from Mewtwo? Oh. You always gotta check. You never know. Great pokes get boosted experience, and it's it's kind of nice. Or restore. So there's Blackthorn side of Dark Cave we can check out, and then there's Route 45, and then I can backtrack a little bit. Did I ever teach cut? No, we just caught it. Cut. Because we're in a menu anyway. There's going to be three checks in here. This is one of those cases I talked about earlier where if we didn't have Flash and Zephyr badge, this would be considered quote unquote out of logic, but you could still do it anyway. One more check. Alright, so old rod, completely useless to us at this point in time. And make our way through 45. And actually, you know what? Before I go to Tin Tower, which I still think is the correct fight play, uh, I think we go back to Kanto because there's a lot of checks we can do that don't require fights. get as many checks out of the way as possible. A few more checks. Alright. Let's go ahead and... So there are a lot of checks in this, like, mid-northeast area of uh, Johto that we can knock out. We have Cut now. So we can do this entire maze.
All right. There's what? Five checks locked behind cut. And there's another check locked behind surf and cut on Route 43 right below us, so we can go to that. All right. One badge down again. Two badges. Two badges here, back to back. Very nice. Oops. Had to go back to Lake of Rage. Silly me. We're gonna get that uh, berry tree that's locked behind Cut and Surf. My repel ran out and I didn't even realize. Is that Thunderbolt? Because imagine... Sacred Fire. If I didn't have Flamethrower already, that would be really, really good. Okay, so there's seven items we can get over here now that we can both use Strength and Cut. There's three outside, and then there's four inside. Which I guess technically would have been faster to do the strength side first, but that's okay. We got TM42, I think it was. We'll check our TMs in a little bit. Knock out these four strength checks. We're gonna escape rope out of here just to get that out of the inventory. Got more money. And another escape rope. Okay. Oh. Alright, what else can Oh I can do Whirl Islands now. Let's do Whirl Islands. Then we'll finally go to Kanto. <laughs> It is, it is really easy when you're doing one of these to be like, I'm going to do something, and then you stare at the tracker for a little bit and go, no, but I think this is better. Also, don't mind the rivals, it's totally normal. The game is just confused. We do not have the silver wing, unfortunately, which means we can't get the level 60. But I don't know if we would even replace the Blastoise anymore. But I said that about the Dragonite. And look at what happened. The World Islands also has a lot of checks. And there's also a fight-free Bastion, so... Gonna clear out our inventory a little bit. There is... There is a reason to keep your inventory full, <clears throat> because... Key items will always be able to be picked up. And then, like, junk items could not be picked up. But, uh... If it's something like a vitamin, you know, it's always nice to have. So I usually clear the inventory at random intervals. All right, another badge. 
Oops. That's Earthquake. We found the Earthquake TM. We know that because Faulkner told us TM31's Earthquake, and we're not using the Dragonite. All right, well, there's another badge, sure. This place is pretty loaded, actually. <laughs> this ROM really wanted us to have a good mon. Poor Dragonite. All right, so save here because there's a hidden item check out here, and by doing that save, not only do we keep our repel steps, but we also don't have to use flash again. Man, Earthquake. That Dragonite would have been so angry. Okay, there were three badges in here. What the heck? This place was stacked. We're only missing four badges? Huh. I don't know why I gave that to you. Okay, um, what else can we do? Kanto. I was talking about Kanto. Let's, let's go do that. Goodness gracious. Here, I'm missing Rising Badge, Boulder Badge, Cascade Badge, and Earth Badge. Okay, now that we have Cut, we can access this half of Kanto. We are continuing to try our best to not get into fights, not because fights are bad and not because we can't handle them, but we are literally doing as many faster checks as we possibly can. Ooh, a quick claw. You know what I'm going to do? This might seem silly, but I'm going to give this protein to the Dragonite and I'm going to give the Dragonite quick claw because if we ever need to <laughs> swap and possibly self-destruct, we have a 10% chance of getting our way. I thought I pressed right. If you press right as soon as you load that route, then you don't hit him, but I obviously failed to do that. I thought I did. Whoops. That's fine, I just want to remind everyone that we have a Blastoise. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. Look, look at this turtle I have. I love turtles. If that were Thunderbolt, I would have killed. Alright, who loves Viridian Forest? Look, it's Viridian Forest. Okay, there's a Silver Wing, so if I really want to go back to Whirl Island and check out the 60, I can. And you know what? I'll, I'll actually leave that one to chat if, if uh, our lovely producer Richard wants to make a poll for chat on whether we go back to Whirl Islands and check out the Lugia or just ignore it and stick with the Blastoise. I'm willing to do anything. I right, really nothing on this route, turns out. Bonk. Is that Thunderbolt? I'm so thirsty for Thunderbolt. String shot! That's exactly what I said. Well, it looks like it's an overwhelming yes to check it out, so I, I guess I'll do that. Everyone's so demanding, gosh. I can't wait for it to be Mewtwo and I just look like the ultimate cheat. I used all these TMs on the... And this is the same problem with the... the uh, not with the Blastoise, with the Dragonite. So many good TMs and I've already used them. Alright, before we check that out, 
There's two cut checks down here that I'm going to do. And there's also two cut checks, oops, two cut checks uh, route 12. Let me knock out some of that. I can also return the machine part. And 83% of you said we should go check out the Lugia, so I, I feel like I don't have much of a choice here. <laughs> I kind of don't want to check out the <laughs> Lugia, because if it ends up being a Mewtwo, I will look like a cheater. Alright, two more badges. Excellent. We'll check it out. Don't worry, gang. I'm just taking care of a couple of other things first. Going back through Rock Tunnel to deliver the machine part. Because that unlocks five checks. Then we'll, oops. Then we'll go back down to Route 12 to get those two cut locked items. I'm terrified of this Lugia. Gotta be honest. So for reference, my my personal best time with these settings is 2 hours, 19 minutes and some change. And we're actually on a nutty pace right now. I gotta be honest, I didn't change anything from my normal settings, so there's a real chance I wasn't gonna finish. <laughs> so, uh, oops. Nobody tell Hobbs how underprepared I was, thanks. Alright, we're gonna do this neat thing where we heal using the box. Oh, heck, my movement. Oh, gosh, my movement. <laughs> yeah, when I... When I made this... Um, when I made this seed, I went into the randomizer program, and I just, without thinking, just made the seed. And then as I made it, I was like, wait a minute. Maybe I should make a safer seed. And then I shrugged, and I was like, nah! <laughs> so, uh, we'll, we'll see if that... Oh, my menu's messed up because of the Pokedex! Um, where did I want to go? I want to do... this. There's two items in the underground and one more in Vermilion City, and then we will go check out the... Uh, Lugia, like everyone asked. Is TM19 Thunderbolt? Imagine. Bone Meringue. Nope. Now, there is one downside to, to approaching a randomizer like this. Um... Because I'm not doing fights, if we're ready to go soon, I'm going to be way more underleveled than I already am uh, for, like, end game. Okay, we'll go, we'll go do this. We'll go do this now before I forget. I don't guarantee that I'm going to use it, but I will catch it for everyone. Flash. Hmm. 
We're gonna do the usual save, just in case it's a physical mon. Uh-oh. Oh. Ah, uh. oh, no! Okay, well... <laughs> We're not using that! But what's its move set? Ah! Ah! If only you were right, you instead. Are you kidding me? Ah! Oh. So Pichu evolves via happiness, and then Pikachu evolves via stone. So like the happiness thing is the problem. That could have been so good. No! Oh man! Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh, it hurts. Okay, the only thing really left now is uh, checks that require fights. So, our plan of action right now is, one, I'm going to save right here, because if the check's down here, nothing, then it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to check everything that I can here on Route 26 and 27, which is, you know, Tojo. And then, um, if there's nothing, we save and quit. Then we go up through Victory Road, and it will unlock Indigo Plateau, because one of the requirements for beating this is the Elite Four, so it's all required fights. Though, this Lugia has good experience, so I might just take the extra movement anyway. Who knows? We'll see. It is faster to save and quit, though. Ah, if that were a Pikachu, then we would consider swapping, because then I could just turn it into a Raichu. Stab Thunderbolt at level 60. That's so good. We just got deprived. Like, that's not cool, man. Oh my god. Alright, chat wants me to use the Pichu, but I'm, I'm sorry. I want to finish. I have curry upstairs. I'm so hungry. Do you want me to starve? Also, at this point in time, I'm getting a level, so I'm just gonna deal with the fact that I have to do extra movement. I goofed. Sorry, chat. I can't do it. I do wish that it weren't a happiness evolution, though. That would be great. I'll tell you what, I will try. I, I will I will use the Pichu for one fight. That way everyone's happy. We will use Pichu for one fight. To be determined. But it won't be a, a baby wild or anything. I promise it'll be part of a needed fight. I'll do it for you, chat, because we love you. Well, that's useless now, but we have it. So the pass is uh, the magnet train pass. That's how you. That's one of the ways to get into Kanto. Um, it's also the faster way to get into Kanto, as opposed to you know the SS ticket. But alas, none of that really matters anymore. Is that Thunderbolt? I jump kick. The Dragonite was gonna be so good! Alright, so nothing Tojo side. Oh, hey, it's Dig. Alright, grab all the items in here. We have quite a few checks available still, and not much left we need. There is, unless something's locked behind Waterfall, there's no more HM we need. Um, we just 
need the two badges, right? Oh, I never clicked Boulder badge. You've had that. We're missing Rising badge and Cascade badge. And then once we get all of that... Here. Putting the Pichu up front right now. It's participating in a fight. It's going to do its best. This is not the fight I should be using it in. Okay, so lost items a check. And you know, honestly, what I should do, since we're here, what I should do is, um... Oh no. Oh, Pichu. I should actually beat Elite Four while we're here, because that makes the Tin Tower check a little better. So what defeating the Elite Four does for us is it unlocks one additional check in Tin Tower. It allows us to see the Ho-Oh, which, you know, the Ho-Oh is another level 60, so who knows, maybe we main swap anyway. Um, oh my god! Well, there we go, I used the chat. But it also unlocks the Ho-Oh room in Ruins of Alf, which is four additional checks. So I think we actually clear out Elite Four now. It's also a really good experience for the Blastoise. I just need to go buy some X items real quick. All right, I'm never going to kill this. Speaking of good experience... Oh my... No, stop! Crit! No! Crit! Wait, now's my time. We're trying this. Work! Do a dumb move! Quick claw, activate! Ah! For Hobbs! Yes! <laughs> Hobbs told me to do that over the break! We did it! We used Pichu like chat wanted, and I did that for Hobbs! Unbelievable. I can't believe it worked. <laughs> Let's go, Dragonite. <laughs> I need to take a second. <laughs> that was so stupid. Uh, let me go buy X items. <laughs> the Quick Claw didn't proc, but I did exactly what I said I would. Oh man. Um, sell these. Sell these. Sell all of those. Let's get rid of a lot of these moves. Okay, we're gonna buy a lot of X specials. A lot of speeds, some defenses. Well, I mean, I'm rich, so I'll just buy all of that, I guess. It's less inputs that way. Let me sort my items real quick. So they're battle ready. We want this up here. This here. Use the calcium. Use that. Do that. Heal. All right, we're ready for the Elite Four. Like I said, Elite Four is one of the requirements that I have set up for beating this. Um, you need to defeat the Elite Four and get all 16 badges for red to show up. So anyone unfamiliar with the battle mechanics of Pokemon, what X items do is they increase your stats incrementally. So after two X items, your stat is doubled. After four, your stat is tripled. After six, your stat is quadrupled. 
So we are one and a half times stronger than we were with our special attack because of that X special we used. And that's kind of, not only is that a way to help you win fights faster, but it's also kind of a way to offset being underleveled, which we definitely will be for Red. Definitely will be. But yeah, I don't, I don't feel... Okay, so... Let's review real quick, because I always mess this up. So let's review the importance of Elite Four besides it being required. So we will get one check from Professor Elm. Um, we'll get an additional check in Tin Tower. It'll, it'll allow Ho-Oh to show up, which gives us four additional checks. So the Elite Four will give us a grand total of six checks on top of it's already being required. I don't think this is going to kill. Oh. Oh. I was right, and I wish I wasn't. This will kill. This might kill. All right. All right, two out of the four Elite Four and Champion down. This really, we haven't broken a sweat. This Blastoise is so good. It's incredible how much faster this goes when everything is not 50% stronger, though. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say. Oh, Giga Drain. That was hardly anything. Now, at some point in time, I would like to use my rare candies. Uh, I'm stubborn. I want to make sure I use the candies as efficiently as possible. So if, for example, what's about to happen, we're going to level to 49 and then have a ton of leftover experience and probably be like, you know, 30 to 40 percent of the way to the next level. I don't want to use my candies then because it feels like a waste. But it's like it's, it's a it's a sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> and I just I fall for it every time. See, like, I don't want to use my candies now because we're over halfway there. So I'm going to wait. And then we're going to continue to wait. And we're going to wait and wait and wait and never, ever do it. Never, ever. Plus, if the ho is good, then we can use candies on that. I don't see what replaces this Blastoise right now besides a Mewtwo or... Imagine if it's another Dragonite. Oh, that'd be so funny. This moveset is ridiculous, though. It's so good. Okay, that's not gonna die. Are we gonna live on, like, one? No, that's almost one. No! Just crit next time, forehead. <laughs> We're never going to get the optimal time to use our candies. This is such a... <clears throat> I don't know why I do this to myself every time. They were over halfway, so why would I use it now? Okay. I think I'm going to use two X specials on this fight. Also, that Lapras is not going to die to one anyway, so... Oh my god! No, 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 go, go away! Go away! No! Ah, <laughs> it hurts! Why does it have Solar Beam?! That's not gonna die either. Oh my goodness. Lance is a nightmare.
Okay, that dies. Surely. Thank you. Nothing's dying on this fight. It went from easy peasy to all of a sudden. No. My brother. Wait, he had Charizard and Blastoise. Where's the Venusaur? Yep. That's how I remember Venusaur. <clears throat> Alright, we can use our candies now. That's cool. Alright, so there's one of the requirements down. We're still missing two badges. Two? Three. I can't count. We're missing three badges. I've been saying two this whole time. We don't have rising badge. I'm an idiot. Well, with that, folks, we're going to go ahead and uh, let me just get to a good stopping point here. We're going to go ahead and take our second and final break of the day. Um, let's grab this one item here and then we will call it a break. Oh, right. OK, there's there's a cutscene here. So. Uh, OK, there's our one item. So we're going to pause in three, two, one, pause. I just want to remind everyone real quick that uh, if you don't want to watch ads, you can always subscribe to the channel, whether it's a regular sub or a prime gaming sub or whatever. But whether you can subscribe or whether you sit through the ads, it does help fund not only Hotfix content, but AGDQ 2023. So please consider sticking around and we will see you on the other side of the break in about five minutes. Welcome back, everybody. My good pal Hobbs sent me a DM and was like, wait, you should have named your rival. So here we are. I reset during the break and got back to the screen because our rival is why our good friend Hobbs is not here with us today. But uh, <coughs> anyway, um, just want to remind everyone, if you ever want any information on anything, whether it's upcoming events or hotfix shows or anything like that, just go to gamesunquick.com. It's a nice central hub for all the information that you need. Uh, we're going to get right into it because... Either we're going to get really lucky and be done in 10 minutes, or I'm still not going to finish despite how well this has gone. So we're going to get right into it now in three, two, one, go. So we already know that we don't need this item, but it was a PP up and I want a PP up. So we're going to take that. Um, what is my plan of attack? So we're going to go to Tin Tower. That's right. I went on that whole ordeal about how what I'm doing was super smart and super cool, so let's actually follow up on that. I think from here, the plan of attack is we clear out Tin, which also includes Hobo Chamber and Ruins of Alf. Then we go do the Rocket Hideout finally, because that's a lot of checks. Once we're done with the Rocket Hideout, we'll go do Radio Tower, because by doing Radio Tower, that allows us to do Claire's Gym, which means we can go to Dragon Den. So those are our three most concise checks with a bunch of like options available. Why does he have an Entei? Why are you guarding this tower? So we do have a plan of attack. Now, just because you're doing the most optimal strat in a randomizer doesn't mean it's going to pay off because that's the whole point. It's a randomizer. So I could very well be done because of my brilliant thinking. Or it could be locked like the blue fight, which is an obnoxiously difficult fight for one check. We never know. But usually it's best to just go with the optimal amount of checks that you can. Um, that's kind of why the first hour and a half of this, we basically tried to forego as many fights as possible to clear as many checks as possible. Because fights aren't necessary to find good items. Now, Tin Tower is going to have a lot of items available, especially since we cleared the Elite Four. So we will have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We'll have 15 checks. And then the additional 4 from defeating the Ho-Oh. So we unlocked 19 checks total. 
And because we already talked to Elm, that's 20 total checks just from beating the Elite Four. So, all in all, a lot, a lot of checks for only three fights. Three fights and then the five Elite Four. Now, this was a Jolteon. If I remember correctly, I did. I'm curious what the ho -Oh is going to be at this point. I did not kill. I'm shocked. All right. So this check right here required the Elite Four. Ended up being nothing, but that's okay. Two max elixirs in a row. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is very not OSHA compliant, by the way. Alright, so Tin Tower is so far. I'm not going to say it's a bust because that's just a handful of items so far, but it has not been useful. especially not been useful so far. Goodness. My genius play is looking like a, a, a bust. That's another one of those cases where one of the checks takes longer to get back to where you were. Okay, but I will keep that because rare candies are good. So a save and quit there would be faster, but since it's a rare candy, it's really hard to say no to that. Okay. Rising Badge is good. Uh, we don't have Waterfall, so we can't really take advantage of the HM situation with that, but Rising Badge gives us another check at Professor Elm. It's normally the Master Ball. But that could be the item we're looking for. Is that Thunderbolt? Alright, TM22 I believe it was. Okay, Earth Badge. So there are two badges in here. There's still some items left. All of our items might be in here. Alright, 22 and 26, I want to check. Okay, usual case. <clears throat> we want mail if it's a physical attacker. That's uh, Meow. as well. Whatever. You never know. Does it at least have good moves? Came with an item. Came with TM35. It does not have good moves. Okay, so nothing really worked. We go through Union Cave again to get to the Ho-Ho Chamber. If this has our badge, then that'd be cool, but I'd also be slightly concerned. 
because we are level 53 right now with a couple of candies. Please. Full restore, max revive, full restore. Let me guess, full restore. Oh. Oh. That's what I get for being snarky, I guess. Alright. Before we dive into more fight checks, there's a couple of non-fight checks I can clear out real quick. Well, there's Waterfall. Which means I can go access the, uh, that side of Mount Mortar. <clears throat> so that's a non-fight check I can do. There's also this that we never checked. Oh, please. Okay, TM24 is normally Thunderbolt. What is it now? Charm. Uh-huh. Very good. All right, there's a cut tree here. We never checked. Rare candy's good. I'm pleased with that. All right, so no matter what, we're going to Mahogany. But what we have available here is we have the rocket hideout, and then we have the items locked behind Waterfall. So we're gonna knock out the Waterfall items. Because I believe that's like nine items. We do have to teach Waterfall though. I want to look at the tracker and see how many it actually is. Five, six, seven. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, it is 12 items. <clears throat> so these 12 items could very well be the final badge. We're very close to done. Once we get the Cascade badge, it's literally just go to red and hope that we don't get thundered to death. Fun fact for everyone, because one, I want to share a fun fact, and two, I want to respond to Hobbs in my DM, and I know he's listening. So, uh, a lot of moves start with the word thunder, right? Well, I believe in the Japanese version, Thunderbolt is known as 10,000 volts. So it's a little more obvious what the move is. We keep finding rare candies, which is good. So there are 12 rare candies in, in the standard game. You can get up to 16 if the uh, if the professor's aid gives you a rare candy because it just multiplies that item by five. That is sweet scent because it is always sweet scent. Carbo's good. Carbo's and calcium good because more speed and more special good. More rare candies, good. If this place doesn't have what we need, that's totally fine, because we got three rare candies from here. Or two, or something. One of the rare candies was from Route 32, never mind. But we've gotten three rare candies in the past five minutes, so... It was very good. Alright, so this was not needed, but we got the candies. We got an escape rope in here, too, that I can just use up. I meant to use the Carbos as well. Oh well. We'll do that in this menu. We have nine rare candies ready to go. At a moment's notice. We're also incredibly overleveled for this part. Everything here is like mid-teens to mid-twenties. But this is the, the highest density amount of checks for us now. We can get 15 total checks from this area. 12 from specifically in the hideout, 
two from Price's Gym, which requires the hideout, and then one on the route above us on Route 43 that requires the hideout. So this is theoretically our best choice. And like I said, after that, from here, it would be do Radio Tower, which unlocks um, unlocks Dragon Den. I would consider Radio Tower earlier if we had the basement key, because then we could go into the basement of Goldenrod and knock out a ton of items there, because there are a lot of items in the basement. This is... This is mean! I think once I get a level, if I get a level in here, we use the nine candies. This is mean! This is the kind of main that Hobbs needed when he did these. Poor Hobbs. Brother. Now what I'm thinking is what do I replace with a sleep move for red? I think we get rid of spark just because it's our weakest move. Ice and fire have very similar coverage. Um, but not exactly the same. Electric would give us water types if we run into a water type, but like I said, we could always put them to sleep and just spam serve. We might not even need sleep. We might be able to just set up just fine. So these trap Pokemon, you have to fight them. Like you can either faint them or catch them, but we do have to fight one to get a hidden item here. And this is a hidden item that a lot of people that I've talked to didn't know existed. Yanma. We did not need to spark that. It would have died to surf. I'm mean. In fact, I'm probably going to spark most everything. That way we can conserve our, our uh, surf. Alright, so we have to fight two trainers in here because they each give us a password to unlock a door, which gives us another fight, which gives us a password to unlock another door. Well, now that's just extra mean. I've been informed that I have 400 elixirs, so I shouldn't care about conserving PowerPoint. Well, that is a solid point. Heck you. Alright, there's been far too many times where this item has been something I needed. And it took too long to grab. Is that Thunderbolt? Please be Thunderbolt. Crunch. Pretty solid move. Oh my god. Doesn't fit our moveset right now, though. Alright, good rods. We now officially have all three rods. Not like it matters. Alright. 
Okay. He normally has a coughing anyway. What kind of randomizer? Alright, we're gonna use a candy after this fight. And get big and strong. Or restore that 2 HP because we really need it. Use one of my 9 million max elixirs because Hobbs reminded me. Now we're going to candy to 63. good. So there's no item left in the hideout, but like I said, once we clear this, we can do price, and we can grab the item above us. <clears throat> and then from there, because it's not looking optimistic, we will go do Radio Tower. Though I wish I knew where Card Key was. Surf should one-shot everything from here, even if it resists. Well, that Charizard is extra dead. We do have a lot of checks available still. Like, outside of this in Radio Tower slash Dragon Den. But we still, we still haven't done Bugsy. Like, we still haven't completely cleared Azalea. We haven't done Whitney yet. We can do Chuck. Chuck is three checks. As Chuck, his TM, and then his wife. There's the lighthouse, too. I haven't done the lighthouse. The lighthouse might actually be a smart play after Radio Tower. We don't know what the secret potion is, though. Because that would lead to two more checks. But this could all be moot because we might actually, you know, get the last badge here. Interesting electrodes. Is this Thunderbolt? Uh. Thunderbolt's the last move that we need for this moveset to be absurd. Spikes, we already had it. Fantastic. Thanks, Spike. Alright, so this check doesn't require a fight, so I'm going to do it first. Uh-oh. Alright, so there's Basement Key. So now, definitely after this, we go do basement. Because that is the best area to go at this point. Very good. This seed's pretty good, like, regardless of, like, what the time is, this seed has been pretty good. It's been generous with, like, early mains. The TMs have been really, really good. No Thunderbolt, though.
Peppy! Ouch. Alright, so radio tower after this if this doesn't give us the badge. I mean, water is just, you know, hot ice and a rare candy. He's so nice! All right, so we're going to use this rare candy. Actually, before I do that, we have a lot of money, so I'm going to go buy all the calciums that I can. So we are in go mode because we have all the badges we need. I'm going to go buy calciums. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to save because if I buy too many calciums, that's not going to matter. Never mind. Okay. doing this so I know can't math I know how many I have left that's making my inventory nice that way the, the fight is less thinking and, and more clicking This was a pretty good seed. Really good seed. Unless red is terrible. So it is faster to get to Mount Silver from Viridian than it is from Indigo Plateau. the fight goes south, we do have a sleep move we can use to try and take advantage of things. Right, we are almost done. If the fight doesn't go bad, we're done in like five minutes. Under two and a half hours for a full item rando with these settings is really, really good. All right, let's see what the lead is. Might not be a problem. We'll see. speeds will be good. I'm gonna heal that off because Razor Wind does have a high crit rate. There's that, exactly as I said. Alright, we're gonna set up all the specials we can. Three. Oh, he keeps missing! What a loser! Four. Five. He keeps missing! What a loser! Alright, we're just gonna go. Who needs sleep moves? Machamp needs glasses. Two Machamps! This is a disappointing red. There's the big lad. I think it dies regardless. Because we are plus six. So our special attack is four times higher than it normally is. And then we also have the... Um, we also have the uh, Mystic Water. So our Surf is even stronger. So there should be no problem from here. There is no problem from here. 
So time comes up as soon as Red clears its, his last text box in the overworld. So not the text box here, but the one after the fight. And time. That was not a bad seed. Now, the neat thing about this mod is we can see some stats, so we can go over some stats here. In games, obviously, going to be in game time is obviously going to be more than what the timer is on your screen right now because of breaks. But we can look at, I mean, I took almost 15,000 steps. I bonked 362 times, 77 total battles, um, gained a lot of experience. Uh, own Pokemon fainted five, and I'm pretty sure three of those were Dragonite blowing up. Uh, it also shows how much damage we dealt. We made a lot of money. Um, there's our stats. So this Blastoise had okay special attack, really good speed, really good attack. The Crobat, um, like I mentioned before, uh, the gender ratio determines what your attack stat is. So 0 to 7 in Crobat's case would be female, and an 8 to 15 would be male. So Crobat is barely male. Um, Laffy was terrible. Dragonite had 11 attack. Really, really good. Uh, 12 speed as well. That Dragonite was really good, and we probably could have won with the Dragonite, but we found that War Turtle that was level 40 and really, really good. Um, but yeah, that is a Pokemon Crystal full item randomizer. I know that this isn't the usual content here at the first step. We usually do improv and semi-improv races, but uh, like mentioned throughout the stream, uh, my good buddy Jay Hobbs, he was not feeling too great today. So uh, instead of doing our planned content today, I decided to show you all a fun little thing that I like doing on my own time. Uh, it's also a good way to show all of you at home if you want to get into speedrunning. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a vanilla speedrun. It could be a randomizer of a game that you love, and it could be done in a multitude of ways. Like with Pokemon, you could just play the game. You could do uh, bingo, which, uh, you know, you just accomplish goals on a bingo card. You could do a, an item randomizer like this where everything's shuffled around and you have to kind of approach the game differently. Uh, there's stuff like Link to the Past where there's like Key Sanity, Pot Sanity, so on and so forth. There's a lot of really fun randomizers you can do. So if you want to play a game fast, don't feel like you're stuck in that little bubble of, well, I have to do any percent glitch list. No, you could do something really fun like this where there isn't even necessarily a leaderboard. It's just you going fast and uh, getting more knowledgeable with the game and learning all the tiny little intricacies. But with that, I want to remind you all real quick the AGDQ 2023 will be online from January 8th to the 15th. You can go to gamesandquick.com for more information on that. And uh, stay tuned after the break, folks, because my good pal Kirby Master is going to teach all of you how to speedrun Fire Emblem Three Houses on how to train a speedrunner. Thanks for sticking around, everyone. I will see you next week, hopefully with Hobbs in tow. Take care, everyone. <laughs>